Today is Don't Friday, March twenty third, two thousand twelve. Sometime after seven a.m., we have Stephen Hodgman from Australia doing webinar number sixteen. He's going to talk about class design, and um, it was kind of him to uh, do this because he said, "You know, I'm just starting with this stuff, but you know what? He's doing some really cool stuff, and um, that's how we all learn." And he's going to share that with us so uh, we don't walk into the same cow pies. Right, Andy? Yes. Or sheep oh. sheep uh, balls or whatever you want to call them. Yeah. Or, he's yeah. from Australia. You got to, you know, they, they have yeah. big cattle ranches, but they have bigger well, sheep can, We got to give a hand clap for him for waking up yes. or staying up Dark late. 30 at night over there. Yeah. And uh, so... Um, um, but it's, it's I know most high Australians, high. they like staying up all night drinking beer anyway, so. Oh, no, we don't drink beer out of here. No. <laughs> oh, man, my, my conception of Australia is now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, Stephen? I've been over there, dude. I've it, been there. It's all, it's all yours. And anybody else, uh, if they have a mic on, mute unless you're going to ask a question. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Andy. All yours, And, uh, and um, Hello everyone, this is, um, yes, it's uh, 1.13 in the morning uh, near Captain's Flat, and I'll let you look that up on your Google Earth if you want to find it. Um, I, I, as you said, and the, as the uh, screen says, I um, decided to give a webinar a while ago as a way to force myself to get some progress on a project I've been working on for a while. My background is not with WinDev at all till late last year and uh, Unipass is a great product but it just wasn't working for me. I developed a system for the customer I'm working for in the 90s which was a complete business system and part of it was a scheduling system. It needs an update and uh, the boss is saying to me the other day that yeah users seem more dumb than they were and the, than the system was put in and it's old and needs fixing, so I thought I'd um, give a webinar to force myself to make some progress, as I said. Unipass, you know, if anybody who's listening has heard of it or used it, it's a really good product. I love the way it does data representations, data views, but the way they do GUI just sucks. I just, it's not, it's not flexible enough. I found that WinDev it's, uh, it's so much more flexible and powerful and what you can do and there's so many ways of doing things. It's just great from my point of view. I just want to give a background to the system that I'm doing which kind of might make some sense um, if I try and just jump into class design or how I've implemented it. Um, it uh, might help. Essentially what the way this works, it's a it's a sand and gravel organisation, um, landscape yards, people ring up, they want a, a load of sand, uh, washed sand delivered to so and so. Um, but we create an order, data wise there's an order, there are loads in an order, it could be one or more loads in an order. And each load has a set of items. And well, that's how the data is kind of modelled and if you want to look at a some of the, this is not any kind of anybody's representation model but mine, but essentially you have um, an order which can have one or many loads and one or many items and this just represents some of the, the links you have to the data. Pretty standard kind of stuff really. And when I started off in WinDev, I started off doing it like I was doing in Unipass where I was dealing directly with the files. Um, now, my, what I found is that it kind of works, but I found it clumsy when you had to kind of keep opening files manually to do referencing of um, variables, referencing of tables, uh, picking up names from, from using foreign keys kind of, not always foreign keys. Now I, I don't have a really good background in SQL. Um, now I hear people talk about it and I see it and I have great respect for people with the SQL skills but that's not me and I'm kind of working with what I have available. Um, what, I've, what I've found is that 
the bit of SQL I've done is is good, but I found it when it gets complex, I see some comments on this group where everybody has a different view on how something could be done, and sometimes it seems to work and sometimes it doesn't. What uh, what I found is that doing it directly with queries and, and putting the queries into the controls kind of works, but it wasn't very good for me for development. What I found is because the controls can deal with classes, it makes it really useful. Uh, I'm indebted to Peter Holman, who's on this group, who he published something about this. And what I'm doing is not really his, so don't blame him for my stupidities. But um, I, I have no background in object-oriented programming. I'm too old for that. It didn't exist when I learned programming. And I've, what I've picked up is uh, I've tried to take on what I can. But what I found is that the classes generally give me um, give me a really good way of prototyping stuff, uh, and I can put data validation testing without worrying about how the data is implemented underneath. Yeah, I'm I'm probably older than that. I don't know. What I found is implementing the classes was a far more typing than I thought. I've done some of this before in Delphi, and in Delphi it's all text-based, so you can have a code generator to generate your classes for you because it's just text files. I couldn't see a way to do that in, in WinDev, so if someone has a solution to that, I'd be very interested. What I've done is that I've created, uh, created a, a basic data record class which I call C base record, basically to, to for all my uh, record accesses using that class. Now I found it worked quite well, and what I'll do is I'll actually reveal the. Um, this is my class base base data record. And the aim of this is that it provides a way of reading reading the uh, the data any any data uh, record at all. It's not it doesn't know anything about the data. So if I look at my data class, my data class inherits from the base data record, and what I have is properties, if I want to get the, the unique identifier for the data, I have a property for that, which does a get field value on a text name. So when I define my, my class that represents my table of debtors, each record of the table of debtors, I have a set of constants which define uh, the names of the fields and the table name so that um, so the table name is debtors, uh, the unique identifier is the debtors auto ID and so on. Now this by doing it this way it means that if any of these field names change, this is the only place I change it. Everywhere else it's referenced by the property name. It, the property name bears, doesn't have to bear a relation to what that text is in the field name. I found when I was developing, I found that a really useful thing to do. So if I just follow this through, um, if I look at the constructor of the um, of my debtor, all it does is you pass it a debtor ID. Uh, with the default of negative one, if it's you're creating one, and it just executes the constructor of the base data record using the table name, the unique name, ID, and the value that you want. Now, the constructor of the base of the um, the base in itself, at that point, all it does is sets up a set of arrays and some flags. It doesn't read any data at this point. The design I went for is one that where it only reads data if you ask for something. So when you ask for a, a value of a property, uh, it will get it for you. Um, I won't bore you with the, what this is exactly doing, but 
what I've provided is is a way of having a unique field which can be a set of um, a set of field names. So you, when you have joining tables, not foreign key tables, when joining tables, it will work with that as well. So it sets up a set of key fields and data fields, so that the the field names it sets up an array, associated array of field names. Whew. Um, so if everybody's kind of still awake, if I go back to here, let's look at what happens. So if I ask for the debtor ID, you need to get Hey, Stephen. Yep. Stephen, I got a question. So this is a class specifically for this debtor um, uh, table, right? This one here because, is, because, yes. Yeah, because you have all that constants at the top. So okay. That, that let, tells let me explain. This, 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 I'll go here, and I'll, okay. I'll pick up my data table. Oh. Okay, my data yeah, table. Yeah, left, left bottom. Is there, and that's that's the table definition I have for the data. It has a uh, an automatic ID of debtor's auto ID. It has lots of fields. Some of the uh, are foreign keys and so forth. But that's my debtors table. And what I've done is created a class that represents that. So that I have to close that. I go here. I'm just moving. wondering. If, I'm just. I'm just wondering if you could have used introspection uh, to um, look at your. You mean indirect. Uh, in, in in direction, I'm sorry. Insurrection. <laughs> in direction. <laughs> to, to to grab these constants rather than to have to define it here. Uh, possibly. Um, possibly. I, I, I'm not saying this is the best implementation there is. It's what I evolved to, um, and I went with it because I needed to make some progress. I figure that. Okay. I could always well, I think your indirection would have done that. Yeah, and, uh, Arnold. I don't yeah. think your indirection would have done Cause, that. Because it this would not. Time, you know nothing. No. This class knows nothing about the data underneath at this point. The only thing it knows right. is via these constants that are here. These constants give it. So, the 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 C base data record class doesn't know anything about debtor's auto ID. Knows nothing about that. Well, except I, it knows well, the only what I was going reason to explain. I was... Okay. I, I was just going to suggest uh, I'll, I'll just, that... Um, just explain what it maybe. does when it loads the data. Okay. Um, go on. I, I don't want to, I'm not trying to stop you. Yeah, no, no, okay. I, I, I'm, okay. In the yeah, back yeah. of my mind, I'm trying to think about every table that I have. That means i got to define it that way for the class. And what we learn in about indirection i'm just wondering if maybe uh you can pass a group with you, this information what, what you, what, arnold what you can do is use the uml to generate the beginning of those classes for each of the tables and then That's move on from there like he's done okay oh so you have data you classes take, and use that right and and you and you create the data classes via the UML from the from the analysis, and then you have all your data classes for each of the tables already preset, and then you can move forward with doing the functionality of what he's doing here. He's got a great idea and a great methodology because of the fact that by using it in a class, all I have to do is a dot add. All I have to do is a dot update. I mean, right. I you know, it's it becomes absolutely brain dead to do a lot of things. You could actually add other items inside the class to have it calling store procedures and functions and things like that in SQL that affects that particular table. Okay. Right. Uh, so there's a there's a lot of advantages to the classes and what he's done. Uh, as far as building them, your indirection issue is only going to work when you need to dynamically test something from the fields or test something that is already there that has been defined. You're not going to be able to. Or I, I, to, to me now, of course, Glenn is probably the expert on the indirection as far as out of the group is concerned. But uh, I would think that it would be absolutely 
very difficult to use indirection to, in essence, define what the class is doing as far as constants and, and values to move forward. You know, I, I, I'm beginning to understand because in other environments, that's exactly what they do. They have the data class and they have the CRUD class to access that. So right. I think I'm following now. Thank right. you. Yeah. And what this does is, yeah, there's a little bit more work up front to create those classes, however you create them. But once they're done, your application, now you've got that. You were talking about that three-level application where you have your data layer, and it doesn't matter whether it's WB, W, um, uh, D, or WM, they all use the same data access layer. Right, right. This is your solution. This is it. Yeah, I mean, it does, it does hide you from it, and you can do whatever you like underneath. I mean, when you talk about indirection, in the, in the base data record, I use indirection to load the data. Because it doesn't know anything about the data, yeah. so if you can understand what that's doing, um, that line there, um, that's that's the essence of what it's doing. Once it's read the record, it does an H list on it to get the field names, and then for each field name, it loads the value of that field name into that field names and values associative array, and that's all it does. Yeah, there you go. And that that means that you can wow. load any record at all. And store it in an associative array, and then you've got it. And you can. It means that your. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you whether your constants implement all the fields that are in the table in the record. So so the constants only have to be um, it's all or some of them. As long as you don't do ones that don't exist, it's all right. Um, so yeah. So yeah, that, that this this bit here is the is the the nub of it, and the saving does a similar thing. Um, to save it away. But the advantage is that at a when you're in the um, yeah, so when when you when you have want to get information about a data, you instantiate a data class. Then you just got to read properties to read things about it. You just say class name dot property name, and that gives you the value. And then, no, oh, okay. Got so it. What I, what, this is so. What, the what I've done is I've, if I go back to my, ISO here. Uh, Peter Holman's asking, can he speak up? Uh, sure. Let me turn his mic on. Let me turn his mic on. Uh, enable audio. Okay, Peter. Um, what you have to do is go to um, meeting audio uh, wizard and. You know, I'll get you going. There's a thing at the top of the screen to click your mic, I think, Pete. Yeah, your, your green your microphone. Okay, hi, guys. Hi. Uh, hey, can you turn your okay. mic down a little bit? Turn, turn, turn your okay. mic volume down a little bit. Uh, I just might. You're gone now. <laughs> uh, Peter? Uh, you didn't have to turn it off, just turn it down. Because there's a adjust... Uh, just volume. Yeah, I see what Peter's what Peter said saying, the way I could improve what I've got is actually make the constant equal to field dot dot name and therefore the analysis changes, it would happen automatically. Yeah, I knew there'd be a way of doing that. I wasn't clear that that was possible. Um, just an idea. A good idea. Oh, I think it's a great. I mean I like yeah. to see when Peter when you moved it to that level as well. Is like to see a, a a little bit of snippet of code of how you do that as well. Okay. Okay. Stephen. Well, what what I was trying to explain is it's different than what I know, Peter. You you put a thing up about doing this, and I've done something slightly different. Um, but what I what I decided to do was implement the basic record classes, and then implement the business model classes on top of that, and. I will, I'm completely new to this class-based design and development model, but what I'm really liking is that it seems to make, for me, I can now see how to implement a lot of stuff that was just hard before. Uh, that's what I like about it. So what I've done is I've, I can give some examples of what I've done to get the, the business model kind of classes. Um, 
but essentially, I, I, wrote, I created this great slide, but yeah, I mean, this is my, the data record, it's, everything's text, um, which is an issue if you want to, sometimes you've got to, you know, it's like you're doing in web dev, in WinDev anyway, sometimes have to do the value of things and whatever. Um, but yeah, the, the, the setter and getter definitions, you can do validations if you want to and whatever. But if I was looking at, if I go back to here, where are my data, I've got all that stuff. Really what I want is a business object that encapsulates all of that stuff, the way I saw it. So an example of what I did, I had to use colors, it kind of, what I've created is a display a class that allows me to display a load. So I can actually, I have properties in that class that give me data that's not stored in the, the load record. It allows me to get information out of the shops, the debtors, the company, the orders, and present them as a property of that class. The way I've written it, if I don't access the property, the um, underlying class to access the other table isn't instantiated. So it's a minimal impact. It also allows me to get the items that are in the load. And they're stored in a list internally, and but effectively I've written methods to allow me to, to see the load as a business object where a load contains a list of items and I can get, I can iterate the loads and I iterate the items in the, in the load. And as well, I've created an order which has loads, you can iterate the loads and obviously in the loads you can iterate the items. So it's allowed me to implement a modeling of the whole, of, of the complete business environment, which is for me a bit of a revelation. I'd never actually done this successfully before and it kind of has been very useful. Um, I'm not sure what I should demonstrate, but I can demonstrate what it's like, what happens when you actually run it. Um, I only have dummy data here at the moment. Um, and my slide is not working. I implemented that late and it's not working. But anyway, so this view down here, this is my scheduler screen because I thought this, I, I, I did say it would be about the schedule as well, but unfortunately I've been so caught up in creating classes and making that work, I, um, I haven't done enough on the scheduler, but I'll demonstrate something. I've got here this, this grid down the bottom is a load view. It's pulling up the data of the first item that's in a load. When I double click on it, it brings up the load and you can see here that this is the load and that's the example of how that doesn't work, Andy. You click that and now it'll stick. I'll work that out later. But essentially, yes, um, the code to do that um, I want to say this is the the cool thing that he, uh, I'm sorry for interrupting there, Stephen, but uh, I want to say the cool thing is is he's using an internal window in his looper control. The way this works, and I can show you the reference on the the window have that yeah, the way it works. I want to have if I have more than one item, the list of measurements depends on what the product is, so I have to have a different drop down contents for every one. And the only way to do that in a looper is, as Andy says, you create an internal window. So that that combo is actually in a tiny internal window sitting inside the looper. And for some reason, they don't, I haven't been able to get it to initialize to the value that I'm placing there. Uh, it's loading. I can read it. And it's storing the data. But it's not visualizing it. There's some, I'm not making the screen work somehow. Something about the internal window, which I'm sure I'll solve. Normally, I don't think it's necessary to create an internal window, but this is a separate uh, topic, I would say. Uh, it's a, well, according to the doco, I tried it, and you can't have different contents in the combo for different rows 
unless you do it by an internal window. That's what the documentation says. So uh, when I did that, I was able to load a different list in the different combos. Okay, no, but then you're right. I, I thought it was the same combo for every for every item. So no. I got that wrong. No, I can, yeah, it's all right. I, I can show you here um, where I have some orders. And uh, most of this is rubbish. Sorry. No, I knew I shouldn't have done that. Um, I'll just go back to what I was doing. What, Another display that they want to use here is a people ring up on the telephone and they want to pick up their telephone number and see if they've dealt with them. When you click on the player, on the person, that brings up a list of previous deliveries we've done for them. That looper, that's just too cool. That looper is loaded using that same display class that's happening down here. And that's just one, um, that's, that looper is reading out of a class and it's really, uh, I'll demonstrate that in a second how that works. I need to tidy up how this thing looks a bit, but in general I'm, I'm just stoked. It actually works. I'm, you know, there's not a lot of data, it's reasonably quick so far. So what I can do here is I can go in and duplicate an order. And again, I have a load here that I can modify if I add a new item. Um, um, we'll, we'll go with that. Uh, that's got the same. So let's choose bark finds. Um, it has that selection, so I'll to choose it in cubic meters. And I don't get a price, but that's not surprising. But I go here, and I've got the same. See, it's jumped around. There's something going on here. When it saves. Yeah. I didn't say it was totally bug-free. <laughs> but you see there, I've got tons here. And that's my list there. And here, I've got a list there. So it is working. It's just until you select it. It doesn't stick. Maybe, maybe the refreshing, maybe the refreshing is not happening, huh? I don't know. It's uh, it's a mystery at the moment, but um, but I will sort that out. And yeah, so again, these are using classes here. This is driven. This is refreshed that using classes to do it. And it's um, kind of working. Would people like to see how that actually happens? Where you put it in the controls, how that works? I don't know. Sure, sure. Let's go for um, it. I can show the guts of the um, programs if I bring my thing over. Comes like back. Chris says, absolutely. <laughs> um, well, with the orders one. The looper here, um, its contents is set by variable. I never understood this until I saw Peter Holland's uh, example. Uh, and I looked up and uh, actually the mail, the window mail is a really good example of implementation of classes. Uh, it's a really good mail client actually. It works quite well and it's all done with classes. It's brilliant. That actually showed me heaps. Um, essentially, uh, I'm sorry. What where, where was that again? Where was that again? There's an example that you just said. Uh, there's an example WD Mail, which is the one oh of WD Mail. Okay. It, is, it uses okay. classes to implement email. Um, I okay, don't gotcha. understand exactly how it works, but it gave me some good pointers into how to do this. So really, if you want to see how a class-based approach works. Um, but I've declared a global variable, which is a, um, it's a, a list, which is effectively, um, it works out that inside there, there's an array of my class CDY load, which is my display load. 
So there's an array of loads, my display load class in there. So what it means is that if I go to say one of the elements, I can link it to something. It's automatically knows that it's this, it's this kind of, it's this object that it's getting it from. It knows the properties that are available and it, I've said pick out delivery address. Now, you do that for all the, all the, um, all the elements. When you do your display looper, it automatically goes to the class and executes the property getter. And whatever that has to do to get that delivery address, it goes and does it. And bingo, you see it on the screen. Like for example, this one, which is um, the description of the load description. When you read that, it actually goes and iterates the items, picks the first item and reads out all the, uh, loads a string, may create a string out of the, out of the load item and, and returns that back. But you don't see that here. You don't have to do anything about it. You just say, give it to me and it works. It's brilliant. And you know all that stuff's done underneath. Now, from an implementation point of view, I can see there's possibly some inefficiencies here. With large data sets doing this, it might become inefficient because you're not sharing, you're opening the tables a lot to pick up the same data maybe with foreign key type things. But I don't know, I haven't done on large data sets so I can't really comment on that as to whether that's a good idea or not. Uh, what's a subby charge? Uh, they have subcontractors. So when there's cartage involved in a, in a, um, in a delivery, the subcontractor gets paid an amount and we charge the customer an amount, hopefully to cover the, uh, cover the costs. The reason it's important is that at the moment the current system doesn't uh, enforce it and they're actually doing deliveries for free but um, the subby still gets paid so it's a bit of a problem. The boss is complaining at the moment. So I have, I have some work to do to enforce that. But anyway, that's how that works. Um, the code to actually do it um, to implement it. The one I'm doing at the moment is every time you type it, um, it does a refresh on the list. That's not a very good idea, by the way. But, uh, when you've got a big table, as you're probably aware, it's not a good idea. Um, this is how I load up the looper. Um, I work out um, which contact that I'm looking up to find out what loads we have for them. Delete everything out of the looper. Um, delete everything out of the, uh, um, this is my class object that's the list of loads. Delete all the loads, which again is just a method on the class. Uh, you execute the query, then you iterate the query. For each load I come back with, I instantiate a load class, which is my basic data record class, which is just the fields that are in the actual in the table, the loads. From that, I then create my display load class by, in, by passing it that class object. The way, way, they, way that works is that it, it uses the display object. Some of this might be useful if I explained it. That's the one there. Um, the way the constructor of this of this class works, it takes in a dynamic pointer to a load. Uh, it sets um, an internal representation of that. So it's got a pointer to it and any other class and so forth in there is nothing. So it doesn't do anything at that point. And what I've done is I've implemented in the properties a whole set of things that implement the underlying class, um, it says that of that, that load object execute the property for the shop ID. So it gets that. So all the basic class things are there. But when I ask for a load description, what a load description does, as I said, is does all this. It goes and instantiates um, a load item, products, measurements, returns all that and returns me this description which is the description of the, of, the, of the underlying items in the load. But as you saw before, I didn't have to do anything to make that happen. It just kind of works.
for free because go away because um, when we're back here we just say um, display it in the looper and we just point the looper at the load description and it just gives it to us which to me is just brilliant and it's all part of WinDev we should be spruiking WinDev here right? um, so I mean that's really what I wanted to point out uh, I'd love to have more to show on the on the scheduler but it's I can do some things but it's not very classy that's nowhere near what Andy's was doing a while ago but I can play it anyway well, don't worry too much about that. I spent at least two months farting with that thing to get it to what it was doing. Uh, <laughs> I went down a lot of paths and had to do a U-turn and come back and try again. Well, I can schedule loads. <laughs> so I can do this, and uh, you schedule a load, and bingo, it comes up, and it's red because... Uh, hey, there you go. Then it's not right. And at this point, I, I haven't got anything going. I can delete the load delivery, but you know, I can't add things to it. But I... I what my intention is now, uh, I only got to what I've got to um, basically this morning. <laughs> so now I need to go and look at this and re-implement this because I think it'll be so much better now if I implement it uh, using um, uh, using the class design. It'll be so much easier. This was so fiddly. Uh, maybe I can show this later when it's all working. Uh, that would be fantastic. Any help you need getting around some of the idiosyncrasies of the scheduler or appointment scheduler, you let me know. I'll be glad to help you get. make sure you don't do as many U-turns <laughs> as I did. Thank you. Yeah, I did find it a bit strange, but I'm only using it in a very limited way in some ways, but uh, it may change. I think I'm going to have to make it more complex, but thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, I've got... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't. I hope that was useful. Um, if there's anything else that you get questions of people, I know I've skimmed over it, and it's really hard if people want a, more information. Hey, um, Go on. So, so you were mentioning to me when we were first um, scheduling this, um, Stephen, that you were talking about reports too. Um, so you. You're planning on using the same classes or developing more classes to? I'll uh, be the same classes, I think. Um, the classes would do the reports as yeah. well. Yeah, so that's what I... And I can tell you quite truthfully that I've never written a report in Windev yet. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> um, I've just been concentrating I've written on other stuff. three. <laughs> Hey, that that could be a good webinar. Is is reports because you know that's kind of key, isn't it? It is. People want to see things printed out. See, that's another thing Terry does so well. Oh, oh God, he's going to kick you and beat you with a stick, man. <laughs> yes. Yes. No. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Uh, you is there any other uh, questions for Stephen? Um, just uh, Stephen, I, I do have I do have one question. Yeah. Uh, or, uh, and actually, the question is: is that uh, when you were doing your analysis, did you not go through the UML to do any of the class initial generation, or did you bypass that and did it by hand? And was it just because you didn't know it was there, didn't know what it would do, or you just wanted to go down the hand code? Method? No, it's part of all of that. Uh, one, I know nothing about UML. Uh, two, I didn't know initially okay. that it was included. Uh, one of the things I found as I was going oh, okay. through it. Uh, but I don't know enough about it. I decided at that point that unless I, I, I asked around a few people and no one could tell me enough, so I gave up. I decided I'd keep going. But I can see uh -huh. that the UML would be a good thing to do because it's all integrated. That's the thing I'm finding with Windows. There's always stuff that's integrated that... Like it's just brilliant. Yeah. Like I, I didn't realize all the the triggers and so forth for the data and analysis are all in. It's all encapsulated. It's all, yeah. It's all within one thing. It's very useful. Well, I, I can I can promise you with the UML I didn't you know other than knowing how to spell it, 
I wasn't that good at it either, and it just uh, we had that one uh, webinar on the UML stuff uh, with I think, I think Ben did it. Ah. I can't remember which, but uh, uh, somebody I can't remember which. I don't want to give credit where credit's not due, and vice versa. But it was a little bit of an eye opener. I haven't quite got into it a hundred percent, but between what you've done here and what that UML does, I think that there might be a little slight opportunity for for some uh, learning experience on my part on more on classes. And of course, I'll have to read Peter's uh, documentation again over and over and over and over and over in order to get my head around it because I'm just the sequel guy. Yeah, hey, I understand. I've seen that. I'll be giving you a webinar as well, so... Cool. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, Chris has just said, could I go through the creation of a simple class? I mean, I can, I can do that. Um, it's, I mean, uh, I can show, depends, see the, which, which level you want to do it at, because there's, yeah, when you create a, a class can be, can do anything, if you like. If I'm just creating a simple data to say, take, a profit center, which is a, a a table defined like that, I could write a class now to actually implement that. I'm going to have to do that anyway, so I can look at that if someone wants. If that's what you're after, I'm not sure. It seems too easy. I think I've missed it. Yes. Well, um, let me explain. What I have in I have a load. So, so I, I'm wondering if Chris is. I'm wondering if Chris is asking for the like the anatomy of a, uh, doing a class in 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 WinDev because yeah. in Clarion, which you know I know you didn't come from, there's all these different steps you have to do mm. to, to okay. implement a class well, and create a class. No, I, I did it so very naively, and I found it just worked. So you go here and you say new class, and I call it C Profit Center. And that's the uh, Australian spelling, not the uh, US spelling, you'll notice. Right, so I now have a profit center. So uh, I'll put my constant at the top, and I've got a convention. I use MX as a prefix, because if I type MX, it tells me all the things I can use, which is quite useful. I think that's the table name, but oops, we'll find that in a second. But you can you can always use this to refer to it down here, which is uh, what I do. And um, um, so you look under I've got there the fields that I'm actually doing. So this is what literally what I do. So let's say we pick up the um, Of, and the constants is just my idea. It's nothing to do with WinDev. Um, it's I, I decided to do this because it allows me the flexibility in the future to, rather than passing the actual text in at the point that I create the property, let me. This is I've created a table. I've got. I need to create the profit center's ID. Let me do this first. Hey Stephen, not 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 to um, a question on that. I if I do something like this, the reason why I was trying to figure out if there's another way of doing it is because if I do a multi-language um, implementation, um, this this may not support that too why? well. Why? Would it? Um, because you. This would be the same. Oh, because those are your actual field names, so it's okay. Okay, got it. Um. What I do here Sorry. is, I've, I've just say I'm only implementing the unique field is the profit center ID, um, and I'm putting company ID in there as well. All I do is I say inherits from um, C base data record. Yes, Brian, you can. Say again. Yeah, Brian was just asking if you could drag the name from the uh, properties list. Over to the the editor. Oh, you probably yeah. can see. Look, all these little tricks. Instead of you typing, you could have just. Yeah, see, 
I'm not used to this. Yeah, try one. Just show them. Just show them. Okay, just, well, just do. Well, just do one more. And just, and just uh, type your thing in. Uh, that's the equals. So what you're saying, I can take that. Just drag the name and in. Put that there. Yeah. Drop it. Hmm. So how does that work? So that's text effectively, oh. isn't? it? What does that do when I, when I actually use that? Well, next, if you double click on it, I'll double click on what? Well, you can double, double click, click on any text, and then uh, yeah. if you hit the the quote button, it will quote it as a string. Ah, uh, I see. I see. So, in other words, what you yeah, so like you may not want the prefix there for the uh, file name. You may want to get rid of it, so you double click, get rid of it. Yeah, yeah that's right. Double click it, and now if you double yeah. click it, then just what you're saying. If I and then that, double click that. Just hit the quote button. It'll quote it okay. completely. And then put oh, it ta it talks oh, no, through. Too. That's sweet. That's very simple. That's sweet. Thank you. That's that's you not know, sweet. That's like awesome. To help this thing out. <laughs> oh my God. Very simple. You know, there's some serious hand cutters that says, you know, I really don't like going to the end and putting the double quotes around this thing. Why don't exactly. I just do this? Yeah, I, think that is click it. <laughs> I wanna I wanna know the little French guy's name that did that. I wanna send him some stuff. Yeah, send him some flowers. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no, no, I mean, but that's the difference between somebody developing a tool that's a developer, you know? Because he has to go through that kind of stuff. It's just, yeah. Yeah. So what I do is I do this. Sweet. So uh, it doesn't know about anything. One of the tricks when you're creating a class, you won't do any lookup or necessarily lookups until you save it. So what I do is save it, and it gives me an option of a name. So it stores in that WDC file. So I'm storing that in my scheduling directory. So at the moment, this yeah. is what I'm doing. I'll probably share this later and all that stuff. but. Don't worry, I haven't even got SCM working yet. So, uh, okay, so that saved it. So now, if I uh, do that, uh, MX table, it should uh, know about MX table. And then I do my unique identifier, which is MX profit centers ID. And then I do my N profit center. And that's the constructor. So I have a class that I can construct. Now at the moment that's pretty useless because there's no properties. I can't do anything with it. I can't you know, get any values or set any values. So what you do then is you've got to find where it's put the profit center, put the class. You know, it, luckily it's put it here. I have found, depending on what I've been doing, it will put it in I have a class, uh, a folder for my, in my windows. I've had it put it up here too. And you've got to go and find it. It's just a pain in the neck. But anyway, that's the only annoying thing I've found with it. But if I go and open my profit center up now, that's my profit center, so the constructor and destructor. You right click on it and you can add a new method or a new property. So I'll create a method and I'll call this save. Called Save Profit Center. Um, what that does is create a procedure. Should do the documentation. And then to save it, all I do is execute the colon means execute the the um, the subclass, the the parent class, basically. Um, and I can do Save Record, and bingo. That's my implementation of a save. Um, you can implement a validate, but how about we get some properties? Because we currently don't have any properties. So, so there's no. So I create a new property. I call it p. So that's my standard for my company ID. Um, if I want to read it. I do from the base class get field value of MX company ID. 
and to set it, so when you call it with a value to set it, I do set field value mx company ID bingo and that will set it um, so and I can add another one which would make sense so is this kind of helping Chris I hope it is um, so this is the unique Center ID. Um, don't worry, you're helping me code here because I've got to write this anyway. Um, uh, we can stay here the rest of the day, watch you work. <laughs> yeah, yes. I'm going to fall asleep at some point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, grab that tea. coffee. And, uh, just have a tea. So to set it again, it's um, set. Set field value of mx uh, that from a value. Now, and that's a class. Save it. So you can you can instantiate it, the constructor. You can set values in it, and you can save it. That's all there is. Pretty simple. So if I want to deal with a profit center now. Um, that's how I deal with it. Is this making sense or is it kind of... It is. Steve, maybe one little question. Uh, if you go up back to the uh, declaration of your class. Uh, sorry, wrong scroll thing. Yep. Okay. Um, can you try if the dot dot name would work on, for example, profit center name or company ID, whatever? Dot dot name. Just to see if it will work. How do you yeah, so if you remove the quotes. Right. Yep. Okay, so you make it, you remove the, and then dot dot name. Yeah. Yeah. Then it's dynamic because it will get, but it doesn't work, so. Uh, or it might be that you need to. Yeah, so it might be that you need to declare it uh, in full. But that would make it dynamic, so if anything changes on your data model. Then it would automatically reflect. Um, yeah, but you can't assign it to constant. The value is so. not constant. Yes, that's a good idea. I'm yeah. not, I'm, there'll be a way. What I wanted to know, Peter, do you know if you can generate? Could I get a code generator to to build a WDC file? Like the WDC file is not a text file. It's it's got stuff in it that formats it. What I don't understand is, is it possible to, because otherwise, I, well, I've done this in a Delphi environment, and there I was able to write a code generator to build this base class level, and because all this stuff is the same, and you, you can then go and edit it and change it, but there's a lot of the work got done for you. And I, I don't see how to do that in Windows because yeah, it's... Yeah, but there's, well... Sorry? It's, it's pretty close, so... Um... It's pretty closed as a development system, you know, like the way things are stored or whatever. So you don't have actually access to uh, whatever is generated. Yeah, so actually, true. if you would declare it as strings, for example, it would work. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. So if you would say an X profit center name is string, and then you could declare it dynamically as a private member, for example. Yes. Okay. Which would it's make it then, let's say, independent. Yeah. The other the other thing we can do while we're here and while Peter's online, um, to go back to, uh, I've got some classes that what I did, Peter, is I implemented your QM idea, your query model, where um, just explain this to people. In that you can declare a class. Well, this is another way of doing classes. To I did. This is basically declaring a set of members that have types and what you do is you can actually load them directly from a file or from a query. And Peter has a has an object oriented approach to WinDev document that describes a way of doing something like this. Not exactly what I've done here obviously. 
So I took what he'd done and did it for me. So I had a query that um, I applied to an array class, which is an array of these CQM load objects, and it populates them from the query. So if you, so what I was saying before is, if you're happy with SQL, you can use your SQL to populate your class objects that way, and then use them in a similar way to what I've been doing. But this is where the, the like the member variables, as you see over here, these are member variables, not properties, as I was clearing before. They have the same effect in terms of reading and writing, but in a member variable, when you write to it, there's no way of doing any processing. It actually writes directly to it. Whereas when it's done via a property, it actually, uh, you can do code as well. That's the big difference. But that's another way to implement classes. I've chosen not to go down that way at the moment because it doesn't fit with my view of the world currently. It's, it looks good. I can see where you could use it, but what I need at the moment, I'm not sure that it's going to you know, work. But I have implemented it in one of those screens. That's true. And, uh, well, I think your, definitely your methodology is a more, let's say, o -O purist uh, methodology where you have the getters and setters and everything should be private so as property, so, which is actually more to the, uh, let's say, academic uh, o -O implementation. Yeah, but what, where I saw this being useful, though, was if you want to use it simply in a display class where you have data you're retrieving, you can have a generalized query, which is what you've got, that actually populates the class and then you pick out the members that you want in a particular screen or grid or whatever that you're trying to describe, display, table or looper that you're using. And so this is really good in, in that sense. Well, that's actually the idea. And I can see that that works really well. I tried reusing reusing things, let's say, the, the window, in the wind of uh, philosophy. Yes. So if I use other languages, I would implement it differently. So. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's just what works out, out of the box with, uh, with WX. Well, it's because the, they have the functions to load from, from the file to the uh, array or the screen, or into, uh, and loading into the array loads it into an array of classes uh, automatically for you. Makes it very easy code-wise. Absolutely. Hmm. Just, just so people know, uh, Peter's going to be giving a, a talk on object-oriented programming in WX on uh, April 13th, so several weeks away. That'd be great. Correct. Forward to it. I think that's fantastic. Can we move you up till tomorrow afternoon, Peter? <laughs> yeah, well, we need it right away. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, no, and I have a pretty busy agenda, and I'll be uh, on holiday from uh, as of, no, as so of there, the end of next week. The <laughs> yes, it's the truth of the matter. I'm on a holiday. It's Europe. We're on a I'm holiday. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, nobody's holding. <laughs> no, that's why we scheduled it for the, the 13th, because he was going to, you know, I was trying to get him earlier, but he says, no, I can't do it, so. But this is good. Excellent. Well, um, what else? Do we have any other questions, or do you want to show anything else? Otherwise, man, this is this is a nice. I, I, I do want to say, Stephen, I love the way you've done some of these loopers. Um, you know, I've 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 seen them a lot of times before, and I haven't seen a whole lot of uses in them. But I'm seeing a lot of uses that we're going to, you know, explore in our product uh, based upon some of the implementations you've done, as well as a couple yeah, other. Yeah, I, I like the concept of the looper. Uh, Just take job. a group of group of controls and repeat them. What a great idea! I've never seen anybody else do that. Yeah, yeah, it's a. Well, you yeah, think about it. That's what awesome. web. If you think about it, web development uses this concept, right? Yeah. Yes, it does. And so, the table. Yeah. Yeah. So no, that's great. I, I do like it. I do like it. I like that. I like the solution for this internal it's, window. You done. You done good. This internal window thing. Shall I send you Foster? <laughs> no, I'm doing Coopers actually. Are you all the other? 
Oh, so you Cooper's boy. Okay, I knew there was two, there's no, two of them over there that constantly yeah. fight. You just, Cooper's yeah, a bit more cute. boutique. It's um, it's a nicer beer. Tastes nicer. <laughs> <laughs> when you're over here next time, uh, definitely look us up. Well, I'll, I'll show you around. <laughs> ah, I certainly will. I want, I want to bring my Harley over there and ride uh, well, Australia. We've got a few Harley enthusiasts in the what, area. Which... Don't worry. So, um, if there's nothing else, just be reminded that uh, tomorrow, who's going to talk? Andy? No, it'll be me, because Terry's done run off. He's he's not going to talk tomorrow afternoon. I don't think he's going to be there. So, you have a plan uh, for... So, uh -huh. Andy? You going to talk tomorrow with me, Terry? You going to talk with me tomorrow? You going to be on the... Yeah, 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. 3.30. 3.30 tomorrow afternoon, Terry. That's your time. <laughs> that's my time, rather. Yeah, and uh, so uh, that's Central Time U.S. Yeah. So uh, I'm uh, saying that because uh, I feel that he is going to be mowing the lawn, trimming trees, or doing anything yeah, in that the rain. The in the rain. At that time. In the rain. Right. It doesn't matter to him. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what we've trying to um, Andy and I are experimenting on is, you know, people say, um, you know, we need to uh, try and allow other people to be here live so we're, we're trying this 1 p.m. type of thing so that we can hit almost everybody in in their quote-unquote waking hours so it might be nine o'clock in South Africa and I don't know what time it'll be where you I think are. it's 9 a.m. Uh, I think it's 9 a.m. for me I think yeah 9 a.m. Yeah. so it's like perfect you know um, yeah. and it's in the afternoon or for for us, yeah. So as long as it's bad weather, I don't have any problem doing it Saturday afternoons. Yeah, we should. Well, Saturday gives us the opportunity to go longer too. So that's yes, that's, that's, true. Nice. that's true. So that's the experiment, and in fact, it's such an experiment. We're doing it next Saturday. I mean, this Saturday, and then we're doing yeah. uh, the sequel thing too coming up on Saturday. So Is that check right? out the schedule. Okay. Yeah, and then I need uh, to trim the on. Yeah, next week Saturday. Is is um, Glenn Rathke? He's going to basically cover core features of WX. That'd be good, and awesome, good. Yeah. Awesome. So your idea, Andy, is you're looking to create a uh, open source repository, so for a place. Yes. The, to a point, there's certain things you can do. I think that what is going to uh, to give a kind of a, like a prefix of tomorrow. Uh, I think that what we'll be able to do is have the development of the open source of people that want to contribute it via contribute to it via the SCM, and then we'll also have exports um, like once a month or every time we do a uh, mm. you know a new build um, out of it as just a downloadable, and you can use it any way you want. But if yep. you're if you're looking to say, yeah, I download this, but I want to change some things and contribute it back, then we'll do something with the SCM so you can get in. Yes. Um, because part of the deal is, is as we do our thing for later this year, that is going to be in this SCM anyway. So. And they don't know what that thing is. They don't know what year. that thing is. That's the second hint, isn't it? Yeah. I'm wow. all about wow. hinting today. Yep, hint, hint, yeah, hint. Yeah, the big egg up yes. between you and there. Yes, so. and it is. And, 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 yeah. and it's going to, yeah, and it's going to have to be unhinted. I can guarantee Soon. you. Soon. It, both of them will be unhinted probably before the end of April well, for sure. I, I would just, yep. regardless of hey, what you guys are going on about, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all you guys, Andy, uh, Arnold, everybody, for running this Skype group and the webinars. I found it fantastic. Um, it's really helped me fly ahead with this, and I highly recommend anybody uh, getting involved and, and, give, and, and committing to give a webinar. It forces you to learn stuff and do stuff. <laughs> so you don't look like a complete idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Trial by fire. <laughs> well, well, Stephen, the the other idea that that I like about, or Steve, whatever, however you want to I'm be Steve, called, yeah. Steve, right? Um, yeah. The 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 other reason for doing it is is um, the name Cooper. There's other people like Andy or, or or Peter that can kind of like say, hey, did you try this? You know. So it kind of gives you feedback too as you're. Kind of like jamming. Yes. Yeah. So. Actually, I've 
it, but but you also inspire us by what you show us too, and we go, oh my God, can you do that? And so um, it, it's it's all good. Yeah, no, it's been great. So we love it. it. It really is, and and I don't want anybody out there that you know listens to this uh, to. I mean, first of all, tell your friends and neighbors that are dealing with WinDev, interested in WinDev. If they if they don't have Skype, download it free, throw into the chat. We'll gladly put you in there. If you decide that it's not for you, we can gladly throw you out. Uh, but uh, either direction, you're going to get a wealth of information that we have there. Get on the WX Live for sure. Uh, if you really want some heavy duty training, then then see you know if you're in the U.S., see Glenn Rathke and talk to him because he does some excellent training. Uh, the the chat is is there to help you when all other things fail. If you need a pointer to a help file or something like that, that's fine. Look through your help file. Try to try to do as much as you can, and then use the chat to kind of point you, hey, did you think of this? Did you think of that? I think that it's, a, it's an excellent tool that uh, we put together. And uh, uh, the I've been very, very excited over the number of folks that have joined this little group. Um, you know, in the chat, it's been it's been fantastic. It really has. It's been great. And uh, I think that it is only going to grow. I think the WX is only going to grow. And uh, Dave Harms throwing in the um, um, the news items uh, for for the English side is it yeah the I forgot what you call it developer news I believe it's called now I don't know about that what is that um, is uh, is going to be an excellent tool and uh, you know to work with as well and that's going to be out fairly soon so the uh, community. English based is going to uh, grow exponentially as far as the way it looks to me and uh, uh, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have uh, conferences before it's over rivaling these pictures of the French office uh, conferences in Montpelier mm -hmm. before it's done you watch mm -hmm. Maybe not. <laughs> of course I want to go to France and go to one of those may not be able to understand the thing they say but I'll be having fun <laughs> you drink beer wine as well <laughs> you drink wine as well. I'm sorry. I drink wine. Then. I I, no, I drink I drink margaritas. Uh, I drink tequila. That's what I drink. I drink tequila. Okay. Any other questions? Um, and like like Steve Steve says, um, if you're learning something and somebody's helping you, and you say, man, other people can use it, even if it's 15 minutes of webinar. Let me know because, uh, like Andy and and Ben and all these other guys know that it could be two o'clock in the morning. If somebody like Freddie wants to talk, we'll record it. Well, we'll be glad to. I think it's uh, you know even if you're new, don't be nervous about jumping on one of these things because we're all fairly new at this, and it's it's a great way to share resources, share knowledge. Uh, so don't be afraid to jump on the bandwagon for a. Uh, a webinar or something like that uh, for everybody to know because everybody's learning and the things that you've gone through, the trials and tribulations you've gone through is good news for everybody else as well. Yep. And sometimes uh, I've done webinars where I recorded, I, I went back to my own recording to remember what I did. <laughs> so it's kind of like helpful. Yeah, been there, done that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So without further ado, unless anybody has anything else, um, we'll call it till tomorrow morning, uh, tomorrow afternoon. Thanks very much, everybody. That's great. Thanks again, Steve. Okay. That was uh, Thanks, wonderful. Steve. Okay. Fantastic. Bye. Take care, Bye. everybody. Stopping the.